Welcome to the 134th commencement ceremony of the Catholic University of America. <clears throat> the academic procession has formed around stately McMahon Hall and in a moment we'll begin to move down Senior Walk. We invite you to position yourselves to welcome the graduates, faculty, administration, and honored guests of the Catholic University of America. Please clear the main walkway to accommodate the procession. This is a proud moment for parents, spouses, and friends of our graduates, and for the Catholic University of America. Please all rise and remain standing to greet with jubilation the academic procession and our gradu graduating class of 2023. The commencement procession is led by the University Marshal Regina Jefferson, professor in the Columbus School of Law. The Marshal carries the ceremonial mace, crafted for formal academic events on the occasion of the centenary of Catholic University in 1987. The academic mace traces its origins to the heavy armor-breaking club of the Knights of the Middle Ages. In the less militaristic climate of the Educational Academy, the mace, a symbol of the faculty and students, announces by its presence that those who follow bear the power of higher knowledge, which will dispel the darkness of ignorance and oppression more certainly and peaceably than will weapons of war. Behind the mace-bearing marshal will follow the academic procession in the following order. Principal flag bearers, candidates for first undergraduate degrees, master's degree candidates, doctoral degree candidates, then professional librarians, faculty of the academic schools of the university each led by a senior faculty member appointed by the dean of the school, including Gail Beach, who will be retiring this May after 30 plus years of teaching in the drama department. The members of the administration, and finally, the Dias guests, who include 
the provost and dean of the Pontifical John Paul II Institute for Studies on Marriage and Family, Reverend Antonio Lopez of the Missionaries of St. Charles Borromeo, the president of the CUA Alumni Association, Christopher Pierno, university vice presidents, the deans of the faculties of the university, Thaddeus F. Aubrey, upon whom the university will bestow the degree Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Margaret Donia Harmon, upon whom the university will bestow the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Social Work Honoris Causa. Leon A. LaBeouf, upon whom the university will bestow the degree Doctor of Human Rights Honoris Causa. Catherine Jean Lopez, upon whom the university will bestow the degree Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Our distinguished commencement speaker, Arthur C. Brooks. During the ceremony, he will be awarded the degree Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Attending members of the Catholic University Board of Trustees and officers of the university. In the final places of honor, the president of the university, Peter K. Kilpatrick, and his eminence, Wilton D. Gregory, Archbishop of Washington and the Chancellor of the university. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the 134th commencement exercises.
Good morning, and welcome to the 134th Annual Commencement Exercises of the Catholic University of America. My name is Carnell Lozoya, and I am the Vice President for University Communications and your MC for today's commencement ceremony. We begin by asking God's blessing with the traditional prayer for the university delivered by His Eminence Cardinal, Gregory Wil Cardinal Wilton Gregory, Archbishop of Washington and Chancellor of the University. After the invocation, please remain standing and join in the singing of the national anthem, which will be led by Joseph Chi. 
candidate for the degree of Master of Music from the Benjamin T. Rome School of Music, Drama, and Art. Let us pray. Father of light, from whom every best and perfect gift, we return you humble thanks for our national Catholic university and for the blessings, great and manifold, which through its ministration you have bestowed on us, our religion, and our country. You were pleased, O God of wisdom, to raise it up for the glory of your name and the welfare of the church. Fulfill in it, we beseech you, your will and never failing purpose. Let your Holy Spirit abide with it, and through its teaching, Hold us steadfast in our Catholic faith. Make its light so to shine that all who are seeking after truth may come to know you, who are truth itself, and to keep your law that is the way of life eternal. Give our people such understanding of our university its aims and its power for good, that they may love it even as the church loves it, and strive as of one mind with the head of the church for its increase and advancement. Let us all as sharers by word and deed in the work which you have established have joy in its prosperity and comfort in the certain hope of the reward, exceedingly great, which you have promised to them who do your faithful service. For the sake of him who is the way, the truth, and the life, your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars for the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gay proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Please be seated. President Kilpatrick, members of the board of trustees, administrators, faculty and staff, families and friends of the graduates, distinguished guests, and members of the class of 2023. The rituals on this day, on 
this day on which we mark the 134th commencement of the Catholic University of America are meant to signify a turning point in the lives of our graduates. A few moments ago, students and their professors marched together, attired in similar academic clothing, much like that worn in the universities in the Middle Ages. In the procession, the students carried their hoods on their arms. Later in the program, the deans of the 11 schools of the university will present their graduates as candidates for their degrees, and they will be asked to don their hoods. The ceremony will be complete when the president and the chancellor, by the power vested in each, accept the candidates and officially confer the degrees. For decades, we have been pleased to hold our annual commencement on the steps of the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Although a separate institution, the Basilica for generations has been in the hearts of Catholic University students and the site of much of the religious life of the university community. We are grateful for the generous, generous cooperation of the staff of the Basilica under the rectorship of alumnus and university trustee Monsignor Walter R. Rossi, who joins us today. Welcome, Monsignor. Sure. <laughs> it's my pleasure at today's ceremony to welcome the president and senior administrators of the university, Dr. Peter K. Kilpatrick, president of the university, Dr. Aaron Dominguez, provost of the university, Mr. Robert M. Spector, Chief Operating Officer and University Treasurer. Dr. Judy biggs Garbullo, Vice President for Student Affairs. Dr. Deanne Gibson Madden, Vice President for Enrollment Management. Mr. Scott P. Rembold, Vice President for University Advancement. Mr. Lawrence J. Morris, Chief of Staff and Secretary of the Board. The following trustees are joining us today. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Victor P. Smith of Indianapolis, Indiana. Ms. Elizabeth Mears of Washington, DC. We welcome our trustees and thank you for your presence here today. We have a few others also on the stage with us today. Vice Provost, Dr. Lynn Mayer, Dr. Duilia DeMello, Mr. Ralph Albano, Dr. David P. Long, and Associate Vice Provost, Dr. Angela McRae, University Registrar, Ms. Danielle Spinato, the University's General Counsel, Mr. Matt Dolan, the Provost and Dean of the Pontifical John Paul II Institute for Studies on Marriage and Family, Father Antonio Lopez, and the University Marshal, Professor Regina T. Jefferson of the Columbus School of Law. It's also my pleasure to welcome all mothers who are with us today, particularly the mothers of our graduates. On behalf, <laughs> on behalf of the entire university community, an early happy Mother's Day, and thank you for everything you do for all of us. And also uh, a special round of applause for our dads as well. It is now my pleasure to introduce the president of the Catholic University of America's National Alumni Association, Mr. Christopher Pierno, to assist in the presentation of our first award. Mr. Pierno. Dear members of the class of 2023, it is my honor and privilege to serve as president of the Catholic University of America Alumni Association. On behalf of the nearly 100,000 alumni around the world, please accept my sincere congratulations and welcome to the Alumni Association. I implore you to think of today as the beginning of a new chapter in your Catholic University story. As you depart campus, do not forget about the place where you learned how to lead, where you met a future spouse or best friend, where you found your vocation, a career, your talents, and grew into the person you were meant to be. 
please know that the Alumni Association and your fellow alumni around the world are here to serve and support you as you pursue your goals. Class of 2023, cherish and continue to foster the friendships you have made, use the lessons you have learned across this campus and university, and fulfill your mission to faithfully serve our church and nation. May God always be your light. The President's Award is the highest honor presented to a graduating senior who has demonstrated prominent leadership and outstanding scholarship and who exemplifies the highest ideals of Christianity. Nominees should have a grade point average of at least 3.8, and they should have distinguished themselves in various activities throughout their academic career. After President Kilpatrick presents his award, it will be my honor to present today's honorees with the official alumni pin, formally inducting them along with all of you, their classmates, into the Alumni Association. Pins for all graduates will be distributed at the individual school diploma distribution ceremonies. I now ask Javier Mazaregos and Brian Reinhardt of the class of 2023 to join President Kilpatrick and me at center stage. Javier Mazariegos has earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in philosophy and English. He will graduate magna cum laude, having completed honors tracks in philosophy, theology, and humanities while double majoring. His academic achievements are impressive, but his spirit of service is what sets him apart. Javier has completed his second year as editor-in-chief of the undergraduate research journal Inventio an enterprise that succeeds or fails on the strength of its student leaders. Javier's nominator wrote that Javier does his utmost to support his fellow student editorial board members so that they approach their task of editing and publishing student research with a generous spirit that always respects the contributions of other members of the team. He is also an eloquent spokesperson for the value of a Catholic university education. His presentations at honors admission events have been outstanding. Prospective students and their parents frequently commented on how persuasively Javier argued for the value of combining faith and reason in undergraduate education. In addition to these accomplishments, Javier has served as a resident assistant, president of the philosophy club, student representative on the presidential search committee, and as a member of the president's society. He consistently expresses his dedication to the truth, his love for others, and his commitment to lift up others and empower them to become the best they can be. Brian Reinhardt has earned his Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. He will graduate summa cum laude with a 3.98 grade point average. Yeah. <laughs> Brian has served as a student minister for three years. In addition, <laughs> in addition to being a member of the cross country and track teams. Not only has Brian been an excellent student and uh, minister and mentor to his peers, but he has also exhibited great perseverance. After suffering an injury that took him away from the track, he returned to the cross country and track teams to post multiple personal bests, earning all landmark conference first team honors in cross country in both 2021 and 2022. On top of all these commitments, Brian is also a member of the President's Society. In pursuit of both his passion for ministry and his career goals, Brian supported Light the World Summer Institute last summer and also interned with his local minor league baseball team to get both ministerial and professional experience. He, expre he expresses a unique openness to the Lord's will in his life, a great desire for all to come to know the Lord, 
and for all to know the love of God by his actions and witness. Today we ha honor Javier Mazariegos and Brian Reinhardt as the 2023 President's Award recipients. Congratulations. Since 1896, the university has conferred more than 300 honorary degrees. Recipients have come from virtually every walk of life, professors, poets, cops, kings, journalists, judges, bishops, and politicians. All have made contributions to the church and or society that earn them this special recognition. Today, we're going to add five more honorary degree, re degree recipients. On the recommendation of the President, the Board of Trustees has authorized the conferral of an honorary degree upon Mr. Thaddeus F. Aubrey. I ask, I ask Mr. Aubrey to join President Kilpatrick at center stage. Note that the full citation for each honoree is in your program. The motto for the Catholic University of America is Deus Lux Mea Est. God is my light. Throughout his long, lifelong commitment championed access to education, Thaddeus F. F. Aubrey Jr. has lit the way for countless students at the university and beyond. Aubrey's faith and love of learning was formed by his Catholic high school teachers. He attended Catholic University at the height of the Civil Rights Movement and experienced firsthand the struggles many black students faced to pursue their dreams of higher education. After graduating with a bachelor's in English literature in 1966, he and his fellow honorary degree recipient, Leon LaBeouf, worked with university administration to form an innovative scholarship and academic support initiative called the Partnership Program to provide a better pathway for success for promising minority students from Washington, D.C. area schools. Aubrey served as founding director of the program, which recruited about 30 students a year over the next decade. Most, if not all, were first-generation college students. He tirelessly campaigned for funding and taught at a two-month-long preparatory program for students. This commencement marks 50 years since the first partnership program students graduated. Among their number was Ronnie Lancaster, a Bachelor's of Arts in 1973 who said he is very grateful the university is recognizing the 50th anniversary of this class by honoring these great men. He said the program produced leaders in practically every profession who have made significant contributions to their communities and the nation, including working at senior levels in US presidential administrations and Fortune 500 companies. Lancaster and Joe Fisher, bachelors 1975, worked with the university to create the Thaddeus F. Aubrey Jr. and Leon A. LaBeouf Scholarship Fund in honor of their beloved mentors. The success of the partnership program was just the start of Aubrey's commitment to loving his neighbor. Aubrey has dedicated his life to service and education of at-risk and vulnerable youth, including working to improve the administration of the Virginia juvenile justice system. Aubrey advocated for and taught black literature courses at the university alongside famed advocate for African-American expressions of the faith, servant of God, Sister Thea Bowman, a Catholic University PhD, whose cause for canonization was opened in 2018. As she once said, we each have a light and God didn't give us that light to sit on. For a lifetime of teaching, trailblazing, leadership and service, demonstrating exceptional faith in the potential of others, the Catholic University of America is proud to bestow upon Thaddeus F. Aubrey Jr. the degree Doctor of Humane Letters honoris causa.
On the recommendation of the President, the Board of Trustees has authorized the conferral of the honorary degree upon Dr. Leon A. LaBeouf. I ask Dr. LaBeouf to join President, Kilpat join President Kilpatrick at center stage. As Pope Francis said in an address in 2014, unity does not imply uniformity. It does not necessarily mean doing everything together or thinking in the same way, nor does it signify a loss of identity. Unity and diversity involves the joyful recognition and acceptance of the various gifts. It means knowing how to listen, to accept differences, and having the freedom to think differently and express oneself with complete respect. Leon LaBeouf has devoted his life's work to unity and diversity by spearheading impactful programs aimed at expanding educational opportunities to marginalized groups. Within just a few years of graduating from Catholic University in 1966 with a bachelor's in history, LaBeouf was appointed as assistant dean tasked to establish the partnership program. The partnership program went on to accept hundreds of scholars LaBeouf noted at the time that the goal of the program was simply to place students in undergraduate programs and then help, uh, help them to succeed. At the outset, he recognized that the program should be led by a black director. He also acknowledged that the program needed the engagement of black students already enrolled in the, at the university. Thaddeus Aubrey, an experienced teacher and one of the Catholic University's few black alumni at the time, was named director of the program. Through this program, LaBeouf believed that Catholic University could fill its, fulfill its obligation to the Washington, D.C. community. LaBeouf went on to earn a Ph.D. from Catholic in 1973. Later, LaBeouf served as professor of history and dean of continuing education at Gaudet University, the university for deaf and hard of hearing students in Washington, D.C. He initiated a program called Learning Vacation, which was an immersive experience for deaf students and their family members, particularly targeting the 80% of deaf students who had parents who were not deaf. His dedication to educational equity has remained steadfast throughout his career and can be felt on Catholic University's campus today, including in the Aubrey and LaBeouf Endowment. For his exceptional contributions to educational diversity, the Catholic University of America is proud to bestow on Leon A. LaBeouf the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. On the recommendation of the President, the Board of Trustees has authorized the conferral of an honorary degree upon Ms. Marguerite Donya Harmon. I ask Ms. Harmon, Ms. Harmon to join President Kilpatrick at center stage. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus imparted heavenly guidance to his disciples saying, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Marguerite Peg Harmon, has heeded those words and put them into action throughout her life. Harmon has dedicated her professional career to the benefit of the vulnerable in the American Southwest, advocate, advocating for the dignity of migrants, people with disabilities, the sick, and the impoverished. Working in a border state, Harmon has led the Catholic Church's efforts to welcome the stranger as Jesus also instructed. She is the former CEO of the Catholic Community Services of Southern Arizona, where she served 45 years in various roles. After graduating with a bachelor's in psychology from the University of Pittsburgh, Harmon earned a master's in rehabilitation science from the University of Arizona in 1976. Harmon began her career with CCS as an intern and worked in various capacities until 1999 when she became chief executive officer. Under Harmon's leadership, CCS flourished, providing social services for children, adults, families in the community throughout Southern Arizona and in New Mexico. She was instrumental in developing and implementing new programs and services guiding and guided CCS through many challenges, including the COVID-19 pandemic. She also led several successful capital campaigns. 
Harmon's former colleagues have called her contributions to the CSS immeasurable. They speak of her gifts of kindness, sincerity, warmth, and vision. Bishop Edward, Edward Weisenberger, Bishop of the Diocese of Tucson, has pointed to Harmon's ability to ground every task or project she led and her love of Jesus Christ. Harmon's leadership and dedication have been recognized with many honors, awards, and responsibilities, including serving on the board of directors for Catholic Legal Immigration Network. Harmon's long career at CCS has been marked by dedication, generosity, and commitment to helping others in great need. She has given her life to serving those in profound need. Her contributions will endure and inspire others to follow in her footsteps and help bring light to the world. For her dedication to the church's social teaching and her life of service to others, the Catholic University of America is proud to bestow upon Marguerite Harmon, the Director of Philosophy and Social Work, Honoris Causa. On the recommendation of the President, the Board of Trustees has authorized the conferral of an honorary degree upon Ms. Catherine Jean Lopez. I ask Ms. Lopez to join President Kilpatrick at center stage. Pope Francis has referred to the work of journalists as a mission rather than a job. In his message for the 2008 World Communications Day, the Pope said, ensuring the accuracy of sources and protecting communication are real means of promoting goodness, generating trust, and opening the way to communion and peace. Catherine Jean Lopez, a philosophy and politics alumna from the Catholic University of America, contributes to this mission by using her journalistic skills to write about significant and challenging topics in the church and the world, including bioethics, religion, feminism, education, and politics. A nationally syndicated columnist and award-winning opinion journalist, Lopez's work has been featured in most every national news outlet and cable news network, as well as the Catholic press. She has regular Things That Caught My Eye columns on the Catholic channel on Sirius XM Radio. Lopez is a senior fellow at the National Review Institute, where she heads the Center for Religion, Culture, and Civil Society, and is an editor-at-large of the National Review magazine. She is a media fellow at the Religious Freedom Institute and is author of the book, A Year with the Mystics, Visionary Wisdom for Daily Living. Lopez serves as the chair of Cardinal Timothy Dolan's Pro-Life Commission in New York, where she hosts conversations on life, including foster care and adoption. Lopez also is on the board of various organizations, including the Shrine of the North American Martyrs, Witness to Love, and Hard as Nails Ministry. Additionally, she is a fellow at Catholic University's own Institute for Human Ecology. In recognition of her advocacy in this area, Lopez received the National Council for Adoption's Excellence in Adoption Media Award. Her many other awards include Washington Women in Journalism Award for outstanding journalism in the periodic press for her writings on genocide against Christians in the Middle East and religious persecution. At the opening Mass of the Year of Faith in 2012, Pope Benedict XVI presented Lopez with a message to women throughout the world, quoting Pope Paul VI's address to women years earlier, in which he said, women of the entire university, of the entire universe, whether Christian or non-believing, you to whom life is entrusted at this grave moment in history, it is for you to save the peace of the world. Lopez carries out this call to women with courage, zeal, and compassion. She exemplifies Christ's teaching to engage with impoverished people while also engaging at, high, at a high level on behalf of the issues and concerns most important to contemporary society and the church. For her Christian witness in the public square and her commitment to truth, the Catholic University of America is proud to bestow on Paul and Catherine Jean Lopez the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. <laughs> 
On the recommendation of the President, the Board of Trustees has authorized the conferral of honorary degree upon Dr. Arthur C. Brooks. I ask Dr. Brooks to join President Kilpatrick at center stage. St. Ignatius of Loyola said, love is shown more by deeds than by words. For philosopher, entrepreneur, and professor Arthur C. Brooks, the secret to happiness is found in serving others, faith, family, and friends, not in chasing material success. Brooks has dedicated himself to promoting human happiness and improving the well-being of others. Through his writing, public speaking, and teaching, Brooks has been highly effective in enhancing the quality of life for people around the world. He began his career as a classical French hornist, touring and recording in the United States and Spain. In his late 20s, Brooks returned to school, earning a bachelor's in economics from Thomas Edison State University while still performing. He then earned a master's in economics from Florida Atlantic University. At 31, he left his musical career and earned a master's and then PhD in public analysis from the RAND Graduate School while simultaneously working as an analyst for the RAND Corporation's Project Air Force. Brooks then spent the next 10 years teaching economics and nonprofit management, primarily at Syracuse University. During this decade, he published over 60 peer-reviewed articles and several books, including the textbook Social Entrepreneurship, published in 2008. From 2009 to 2019, Brooks served as the 11th president of the American Enterprise Institute. During his time there, he was selected as one of Fortune Magazine's 50 greatest world leaders and was awarded seven honorary doctorates. Brooks, was dis Brooks displayed his commitment to the prosperity of AEI when he announced his re resignation in 2018, stating social enterprises generally thrive best when chief executives don't stay much longer than a decade. It's important to refresh the organizational vision periodically and avoid becoming uniquely associated with one person. Soon after, Brooks returned to academia, teaching at Harvard, where his leadership and happiness course has gained immense popularity and attention. Brooks is the author of 12 books, including the 2022 New York Times bestseller, From Strength to Strength, Finding Happiness, Success, and Deep Purpose in the Second Half of Life. The 2019 documentary, The Pursuit, followed Brooks around the world in his search for answers to issues of global poverty. For his serious scholarship, good humor, and deep faith, the Catholic University of America is proud to bestow upon Arthur C. Brooks the degree Doctor of Humane Letters honoris causa. President Kilpatrick, your eminence, co-honorees, students, faculty, trustees, families, and of course, graduates. Thank you for this wonderful honor for inviting me to speak to you today. And congratulations, graduates, on this great accomplishment. This is a day of celebration, but it's also a day of anxiety. The reason is because, as we all know, this is not the ending, but as you're always reminded on graduation day, it's the beginning. The beginning of a professional path and a life path. I know what you want. You want a path that gives you passion and that makes you happy. That is what graduation speeches deal with. And they ordinarily give you one of two pieces of advice and they're both terrible. Piece of advice number one. Go find a job that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Good luck with that. It's a great way to ruin your life. The first day that you're not having fun, you'll think something's wrong. Bad advice. Number two, graduation advice, number two, go save the world. No pressure. I teach happiness at Harvard University to hundreds of anxious young people and I'm gonna give you some very practical advice today that I hope that you can use starting right after commencement. 
To get started on the best life and best career, you don't need to find something that's fun every single day, and you don't need to go do something that single-handedly saves the world. To be happy and fulfilled, you only need to focus on two simple things that I'm going to talk about today. Now, a lot of graduates, they leave college asking, what am I supposed to do with my life? You thought that sometime during your sophomore year that your passion and path and purpose would be revealed to you, immaculately conceived? Not so much. Well, it turns out, what am I supposed to do with my life is really the wrong question. The right question is, who am I? Obvious, maybe. No, not so much. Most people don't know themselves very well, as a matter of fact. As a social scientist, I can assure you, studies show that we don't know the impression we make on others. We don't know the nature of our emotions. We don't know what we're good at. We don't know ourselves very well. Modern life gives you terrible direction, too, on how to answer the who am I question. It encourages you to answer in terms of identity politics, as if you were nothing more than your race, or your gender, or your religion, or your political views, and that just makes you good fodder for some baby boomers culture war. You need to reject that, too. The who am I question requires a metaphysical inquiry, which sounds hard until you remember that our Catholic faith gives us crystal clear answers. We start right at the beginning in the book of Genesis. Then God said, Let's, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. You are made to be like God. So who's that? Who's God? The Apostle John answers the question simply, God is love. So what's love? In his Summa Theologia, St. Thomas Aquinas gives the best answer. To love is to will the good of the other. So who are you? Who am I? We are beings made in God's image to love others. That's your vocation, just, just to love. So let's get to some practicalities. Your vocation is love. How are you going to do that starting today? Maybe you should renounce everything and go live like Mother Teresa. I have heard that she was not carrying student debt. So maybe not. The answer is to use your ordinary work, no matter what it is, as a way to love others. There's a beautiful early 20th century poem by the Lebanese poet Khalil Gibran. It's entitled simply, On Work. Let me read you a couple of lines from that poem. Often have I heard you say, as if speaking in sleep, he who works in marble and finds the shape of his own soul in the stone is nobler than he who plows the soil. But I say, he alone is great who turns the voice of the wind into a song made sweeter by his own loving. Work is love made visible. Here's what he's saying. Dedicate anything you do, big or small, significant or insignificant, to the good of others. This was the fundamental philosophy of one of our great Catholic saints, Saint Jose Maria Escrivá. He argued in a homily at a university called Passionately Loving the World, these words. God waits for us every day in the laboratory, in the operating theater, in the army barracks, in the university chair, in the factory, in the workshop, in the fields, in the home, and in all the immense panorama of work. Understand this well. There's something holy, something divine, hidden in the most ordinary situations, and it's up to each one of you to discover it. The objective of your work isn't having fun, although it will be sometimes. It isn't to save the whole world. It's to express your love. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be ambitious or hardworking. You should just be sweet and loving. No. Totally incompetent, but a heart full of love. That's not what I'm suggesting. You see, to love others through your work means bringing your very best effort every single day. It means being completely uncompromisingly dedicated to excellence in everything you do. 
whether you work in a bank or stay at home with your kids or put roofs on houses or become a priest or religious, you don't cut corners when it comes to working in God's image. By the way, this is also the best way for us to share our faith. Most of us are not going to be formal missionaries. And the best way to save souls is not by kicking down a door and shoving a crucifix in somebody's face. The best way to bring people to the love of Christ is to be great at what you do. The reason for that is because excellence draws people like moths to a flame. Your excellence, fellow Catholics, is your missionary work. Take it seriously. And that brings us full circle to finding the specific job or career or life path that meets your passion and makes you happy. Good news. There's nothing really to figure out because it's a simple formula. Take whatever God puts in your path and do it simply with love and excellence. Maybe you'll work in your major. Probably not. Maybe you'll land your dream job. Probably not. Especially if you don't know what your dream job is. Maybe you'll work in the marketplace full-time, or maybe you'll stay home with your family full-time. None of this matters. As long as, at the end of the day, you can say, on most days at least, I did my work with love and with excellence. And will that bring happiness? Now, that's what I study for a living. I'm a social scientist dedicated to the science of happiness. That's what I teach at Harvard University. And I can tell you, you can boil down the entire neuroscience and social science disciplines dedicated to happiness to four pillars, four happiness habits. These are the things that the happiest people dedicate themselves to every day. Faith, family, friendship, and work. That's it. Now, what about work brings joy? And the answer is simple. I've studied this for years. Does more money bring more happiness than less? No. A higher education? No. More prestige, more power, more admiration? No, no, no. There's only two things that brings joy to your work. They're called earned success and service to others. Earned success is creating value with your life and value in the lives of other people. In other words, excellence. And service to others is loving everybody with your ordinary sanctified work. Happiness comes from any work done with love and excellence. It's funny. It's almost as if doing God's will were the secret to happiness. Weird. I think there's a reason for this. And this is my last idea for you today. I study happiness because God wants me to be happy. And God wants you to be happy. Let's be honest, there are very few institutions and in parts of our lives where people really care. Mother Nature doesn't care if you're happy. Mother Nature only has two goals for you, survival and passing on your genes. The economy doesn't care if you're happy, it just wants you to buy a lot of stuff. Our government certainly does not care if you're happy. Our culture doesn't care, quite the contrary. But God cares if you're happy. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, cares. His blessed mother cares. And so, as you leave this today, on this bright and sunny day in Washington, D.C., I pray, and I'm joined by the people behind me in praying, that you will begin the journey of love and excellence, because that's what will bring you, simply put, the happiness that you deserve. God bless you, and congratulations. Dr. Brooks, the Catholic University of America is most grateful to you for your presence and your words of love and excellence on this day of celebration and gratitude. At this time, it is my honor to present the candidates for degrees earned in course. Candidates will next be presented to the president and the chancellor by the deans of the schools of the university. Honors for undergraduate academic achievement earned by the candidates are noted in the printed program. 
As each dean is introduced, the degree candidates from the respective schools are asked to rise to be presented. Academic hoods will not be donned until the formal conferral of the degrees by the chancellor and the president. Doctoral candidates who participated in the doctoral hooding ceremony on Thursday are already wearing their hoods, or should be. The dean of the Tim and Steph Bush School of Business, which was founded in 2013, Dr. Andrew Abella, Would all degree candidates from the Bush School please rise? Your Eminence, Cardinal Gregory, and President Kilpatrick, as Dean of the Tim and Steph Bush School of Business, I have the honor to present candidates for the degrees of Master of Science in Business Master of Science in Management, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, who have been approved by the Academic Senate. Congratulations. The Dean of the School of Architecture and Planning, which was founded in 1992, Dean Mark Ferguson. Would all degree candidates from the School of Architecture please rise? Your Eminence, Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick, as Dean of the School of Architecture and Planning, I have the honor to present candidates for the degrees of Master of Architecture, Master of Science in Net Zero Design, Bachelor of Science in Architecture, Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts in Architectural Studies, who have been approved by the Academic Senate. Congratulations, graduates. The Dean of the Metropolitan School of Professional Studies, which was founded in 1979, Dean Vincent Kiernan. Would all degree candidates from the Metropolitan School of Professional Studies please rise? Your Eminence Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick, as Dean of the Metropolitan School of Professional Studies, I have the distinct honor to present our candidates for the degrees of Master of Health Administration, Master of Science in Social Service Administration, Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies, Bachelor of Social Work, and Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, everyone. The Dean of the Benjamin T. Rome School of Music, Drama, and Art, founded in 1965, Dr. Jacqueline Leary Warsaw. Would all degree candidates from the Rome School please rise? Your Eminence Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick, as Dean of the Benjamin T. Rome School of Music, Drama, and Art, I have the honor to present candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Musical Arts, Master of Arts, Master of Arts and Master of Science in Library and Information Science, Master of Music, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Music who have been approved by the Academic Senate. Congratulations. The Dean of the School of Nursing, founded in 1935, Dr. Marie Nolan. Would all degree candidates from the School of Nursing please rise? Your Eminence Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick, 
as Dean of the Conway School of Nursing, the great school of happiness. <laughs> I have the honor to present the candidates for degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Nursing Practice, Master of Science in Nursing, and Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Congratulations. Well done, that was well done. <laughs> the Dean of the National Catholic School of Social Service, founded in 1934, Dr. Joanne Regan. Would all degree candidates from the National Catholic School of Social Service please rise? Your Eminence, Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick, as Dean of the National Catholic School of Social Service, I have the honor to present candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Social Work, and Bachelor of Social Work. Congratulations, graduates. The Dean of the School of Engineering founded in 1930, Dr. John A. Judge. Would all degree candidates from the School of Engineering please rise? Your Eminence, Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick, as Dean of the School of Engineering, I have the honor to present candidates for the following degrees, Bachelor of Biomedical Engineering, Bachelor of Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Electrical Engineering, Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, Master of Science and Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations, these have been approved by the Academic Senate. Congratulations. The Dean of the School of Canon Law, founded in 1923, Monsignor Ronnie Jenkins. Would all degree candidates from the School of La Canon Law please rise? Your Eminence, Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick, as Dean of the School of Canon Law, I have the honor to present candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Canon Law and Licentiate in Canon Law who have been approved by the Academic Senate. Congratulations. The Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences founded in 1906, Dr. Thomas Smith. Would all degree candidates from the School of Arts and Sciences please rise? Your Eminence Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick. As Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences, I have the honor to present candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Arts, Master of Science, Master of Science in Library and Information Science, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Science, who have been approved by the Academic Senate. Congratulations. The Dean of the School of Philosophy founded in 1895, Dr. John McCarthy. Would all degree candidates from the School of Philosophy please rise? <laughs> Your Eminence, Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick, as Dean of um, the School of Philosophy, I have the very distinct honor to present candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, 
licentiate in philosophy, Master of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Philosophy. All of whom have been approved by the Academic Senate. Godspeed to you graduates. The Dean of the School of Theology and Religious Studies, founded in 1889, Father Mark Morozovich. Would all degree candidates from the School of Theology and Religious Studies please rise? Your Eminence Cardinal Gregory and President Kilpatrick, as Dean of the School of Theology and Religious Studies, at the very heart of our university where it all began. I have the honor to present candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Sacred Theology, Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Ministry, Licentiate in Sacred Theology, Master of Philosophy, Bachelor of Sacred Theology and Master of Divinity, Bachelor of Sacred Theology, Master of Arts, Master of Catechetics, Master of Divinity, and Bachelors of Arts, who have been approved by the Academic Senate. Congratulations, graduates. Members of the Columbus School of Law faculty are present with us today but the degrees of Juris Doctor, Master of Laws, and Master of Legal Studies will be conferred at University comm Commencement Exercises Friday, May 19th, in the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Degrees earned in course will now be formally conferred. Academic hoods will be donned by the recipients after the respective degrees have been conferred. First, his Eminence, the Chancellor of the University, will confer the ecclesiastical doctoral degrees earned in course. Will all those receiving ecclesiastical doctorates please stand? In virtue of the authority committed to me as Chancellor of the Catholic University of America, I am pleased to confer upon each candidate the ecclesiastical degree for which each has been individually recommended by the School of Philosophy, the School of Canon Law, and the School of Theology and Religious Studies, and by the Academic Senate as having satisfied the requirements for these degrees as prescribed by the Holy See. The president of the university will now confer all other doctoral degrees earned in course. Would all those earning doctorates, doctorates, doctorate, doctorates, other than in ecclesiastical schools, please stand. In virtue of the authority committed to me as president of the Catholic University of America, I am pleased to confer upon each of you the doctoral degree for which you have been individually recommended by your several schools and by the Academic Senate. God bless. His Eminence, the Chancellor of the University, will now confer the Ecclesiastical Licentiate and Baccalaureate degrees earned in course. Will all those receiving ecclesiastical degrees other than the doctorates please stand?
in virtue of the authority committed to me as Chancellor of the Catholic University of America, I am pleased to confer upon each candidate the ecclesiastical degree for which each has been individually recommended by the School of Philosophy, the School of Canon Law, and the School of Theology and Religious Studies, and by the Academic Senate, as having satisfied the requirements for these degrees as prescribed by the Holy See. God bless you. You may don your hoods. The president of the university will now confer all master's degrees and first professional degrees earned in course. Would all those earning master's and first professional degrees please stand. In virtue of the authority committed to me as president of the Catholic University of America, I am pleased to confer upon each of you the master's or first professional degree for which you have been individually recommended by your several schools and by the Academic Senate. May God bless you. Will all those receiving baccalaureate degrees please stand? Now we're talking. <laughs> In virtue of the authority committed to me as president of the Catholic University of America, I am pleased to confer upon each of you the baccalaureate degree for which each of you has been individually recommended by your several schools and by the Academic Senate. May God bless you. At this time, I would like to ask all the doctoral candidates to please rise to be recognized. Please turn your attention to the screens on either side of the stage as we recognize all of our doctoral candidates. There's a lot of you.
Congratulations to all of our doctoral recipients. Great work. So now I'd like to make a few remarks uh, to close out our ceremony. A wise priest once told me, Peter, when you're grateful for everything in your life, the things about yourself that you like, and even the things you do not like about yourself, then it is impossible to not be humble, and vice versa. If you're humble, it's impossible not to be grateful for everything in your life, even the things you don't understand. I think this is part and parcel of what it means to be poor in spirit, that is, to lovingly accept from our God and Creator who we are and to be thankful for it. Graduates, parents, faculty, trustees, families, your eminence, honored guests, as I stand here before this community and before the Catholic University of America's class of 2023, I am very grateful and deeply humbled by the opportunity to serve as your president. You all are graduates. You are what make us all proud of being cardinals. Commencement is a moment of transition, and this naturally, naturally prompts reflection about the past. What have we done? How far have we come? It also prompts reflection about the future. What's next? Do I have what it takes to go forward in life? Will there be three Starbucks close by within a quarter mile of where I live? But the question that I think touches everyone deeply is the one our commencement speaker spoke about. Will I be happy? I would like to speak from experience and affirm that if you follow the advice of our guest, and if you do whatever comes your way with love and excellence, you will indeed experience great happiness. And I would like to add a special ingredient to that recipe just for our graduates. I would argue that by leaning into what you learned here as undergraduate or graduate students and trusting in the education and formation you received here, you will find your way forward. You're heading into some choppy waters. The division in our culture in 2023 will not be easy to navigate. You have been educated in a tradition that seeks truth with a capital T. Our culture now largely believes that truth is whatever I make of it. But I wouldn't focus your time and energy on what the culture lacks. Your focus should be on who you are and what you have to offer this world that desperately needs your light. God designed and formed you as uniquely created men and women with strengths and weaknesses and with unique personalities as never to be repeated human persons. And I would affirm that when we lovingly accept our personhood, our identity, as gifts of a loving God, that this is the secret to happiness and to success. And remember St. Paul, all things work to the good for those who love God. Earlier this week, I attended the funeral of Tom Mulquin, one of our very beloved staff members and an alumnus of this university. It was a beautiful mass. Tom had been struck down by cancer at a much too young age, leaving his wife Karen, four grown children, and a chapel full of friends, admirers, family, and fellow alumni. It was clear that Tom had made a huge impact on everyone's lives. Tom's eldest son, Patrick, paid tribute to his dad at the end of the Mass, and he quoted one of Tom's life's maxims. 
Be grateful for what you have, and do not worry about what you don't have. We have so much for which to be grateful. Our very lives, our intellects, our wills, our family and friends, our faith, and the hope that stirs deep inside of us. We also should be immensely grateful for our ability to love, as our speaker told us. And if we are, we will derive the strength, the courage, and the grace to love without limit and to pursue life with excellence. One of my favorite saints is the little flower, Saint Therese of Lisieux. By the world's standards of fame and success, Therese was a nobody. She was fragile emotionally early in life. She entered the convent at age 15, and she died at 24 of tuberculosis. By the standards of the world, Therese's life was short and uneventful. But Therese was deeply grateful for everything our Lord had given her, her deep and abiding faith, the peace of heart that came from her psychological conversion, and a commitment what Jean-Pierre de Caussade, a French spiritual director several centuries earlier, called the sacrament of the present moment. This is what our speaker talked about. Therese said, if I did not simply live from one moment to another, it would be impossible for me to be patient. But I only look to the present. I forget the past, and I take good care not to forestall the future. She is widely recognized as one of the greatest saints of the last 200 years. She is the patron saint of the missions. And St. John Paul named her the third woman doctor of the church in 1997. And all she did was live her life with gratitude, tremendous love, and excellence. My wish for you is that you strive to do the same. God bless you and congratulations again. At the conclusion of the commencement exercises, all guests are asked to remain in their places until after the recessional. Undergraduates of the School of Arts and Sciences will remain in their seats for the conferral of baccalaureate diplomas, which will begin immediately following the recessional. A schedule and map for the individual diploma ceremonies may be found on page four of your program. After the singing of the alma mater, the benediction will be offered by University Chaplain Father Aquinas Gilbo. The president will then lead the recessional and will be followed by the officers of the university the faculties, and the members of the class of 2023. All recipients of degrees will proceed then to their designated places for the distribution of diplomas, where their family and friends are invited to join them. Please rise and join in singing the alma mater, the text of which is found at the back of your program. Please remain standing while Father Aquinas offers the benediction. Sunshine of youth, raise thy towers to the skies, gifted from above. Be the life that never dies, haven of love. Alma mater, we behold the sons and daughters true days of sun 
sunshine, heaven for thee. See you, see you. Alma mater, we behold thee, sons and daughters true. Days of sunshine, heaven for thee. See you, see you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, from whom all things live and move and have their being, we give thanks to you for this day and for all of the achievements that our graduates and their families celebrate. These accomplishments are signs to us of your goodness and of your providential care over our lives. Continue to bless these sons and daughters of yours as they move out into the world to begin new works and new missions. May what they create glorify you and serve their neighbor. Keep your children close to you and perfect in them the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations to all our graduates and their families. I declare this academic convocation for the 2023 commencement of the Catholic University of America officially concluded. Congratulations.
Good morning. Good morning. For the diploma ceremony for the arts and sciences undergraduates, it has been moved into, into the great upper church of the basilica. For our students, faculty marshals will help you process in. For family and friends of our graduates, we'd ask you to go around to the south end of the basilica and enter the main doors there and join us for the diploma ceremony. Thank you very much. <laughs> 